Welcome back to Aquaculture Engineering. This is lecture 12. We continue with the uh, site selection criteria for aquaculture. Again, the species and production level are criteria to be identified with regards to the culture species or species. In terms of the environment, we have already put forth the water and quality and uh, water quality and water management requirements. Next, we proceed with its soil that is holding this water. Okay, uh, this is an important criterion for freshwater and brackish water ponds. For soil, uh, its water retention properties is crit critical. It should be able to hold water in the uh, structure. Thus, it should have the potential to supply water with uh, necessary nutrients for the growth of the natural food of the culture species or species. Thus, the soil is best to contain uh, no less than 20% uh, clay. Specifically, these are uh, the clay, clay loam, and sandy clay types. Uh, and usually, the organic matter content is around 16%. Soil pH needs to be within the range 6.5 to 9.5 uh, to promote algal growth and minimal conditioning. With minimal conditioning, we are referring to the uh, intervent interventions uh, such as liming. And this is for the control of the acidity of soils. Uh, in terms of soil type, it should be hard mud and not a soft and loose type. Okay, again, consistent with the clay uh, soil uh, composition. As to the thickness of the hard mud, it has to be at least 30 centimeters to enable water lag conditions. Uh, so as with high organic debris and organic debris itself is a poor material for diking of ponds. Uh, sandy and rocky soils with organic matter have poor water retention due to uh, infiltration. Last, uh, while limestone areas may yield high alkalinity waters, which is good, uh, they may create caverns and sinkholes and eventually drain a pond. Additional conditions for brackish water ponds is the uh, need to easily fill up uh, the pond in cases of uh, high tide and drain during low tide. Another thing is the provision of soil for nutrients since uh, estuarine waters are known for volatile figures of various parameters such as um, temperature, pH, and salinity. Another important parameter of site selection is topography. This is true of uh, inland and uh, inland land setups. Again, okay. Uh, even for um, um, indoor um, facilities, indoor uh, tanks. For excavated ponds, slopes with zero to two percent are best for pond construction. With the pond slope at the bottom at around zero point two percent. Uh, the reason for this is to uh, minimize the land grading activity uh, during development. Another thing is the avoidance of sites uh, that are below a 25-year uh, flood plain. Flooding is a great risk uh, because it can carry the entire fish population out of the pond. Okay, for, for watershed ponds, the condition is to uh, locate uh, the largest storage volume <clears throat> along the network with the uh, least earth filling to be done. Uh, the dams of watershed ponds should also be as safe as possible. Thus, there should be the least risk to life and property. Uh, factors to be considered in water quantity and quality of the stream uh, water are slope, soil type, uh, the vegetation, and precipitation. 
for branch water ponds, uh, elevation should be at least 0 0.2 meters from the mean low tide level, that is the day two, okay, of the location, to be able to maintain 0 0.6 meters of depth uh, during ordinary tides. And if you want to maintain 1.0 to 1.2 meters depth, that should be uh, 0 0.5 to 1 meters, okay, the, 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 the elevation. Low areas uh, easily to, are easily filled up, but difficult to drain, okay? And in contrast, the high areas uh, need pumping or excavation. Another consideration is climate. The rainfall, wind, temperature, and relative humidity of the location should be uh, noted throughout the year, even for indoor structures such as tanks and circulating aquaculture systems. The natural and ambient conditions will affect various indoor aquaculture processes if not right, climate controlled. For the Philippines, rainfall is water <coughs> uh, provision. Dry climates such as types 1 uh, and 3, uh, these are areas that limit the water availability for consumptive use. The wind, uh, on the other hand, can destroy dikes in ponds, and also it carries uh, with it water evaporated from the structures. Air temperature affects water temperature and the psychrometric properties of air. Okay, it, it's leading also to evaporation or condensation. Uh, relative humidity, on the other hand, which is affected by temperature, promotes pests and uh, diseases. Even for climate control systems, the ambient environment would be the basis for the amount of work okay, or intervention to be done to remove or introduce heat, saturate or desaturate the air moisture. Uh, the more work, the more energy and the more costs the uh, aquaculturist. Okay, other considerations in the site are uh, poaching, competing water use, vegetation, support facilities, fingerling availability, uh, skilled labor, social acceptability, and lastly, peace and order. Uh, these are secondary requirements, if not entirely uh, technical okay, in nature. They are more or less uh, social, such as poaching, uh, competing use of water, social acceptability, and peace and order. Uh, they are social in relation to the aquaculture enterpri enterprise. While uh, the vegetation support facilities, fingerling availability, and uh, skilled labor are technical but can be addressed by minimal non technical uh, interventions. Uh, for example, vegetation can, can help limit wind movement, thus, planting may be uh, done or encouraged. Uh, support facilities and fingerling availability this can be addressed by uh, transport networks or. or farm to market roads, and also transportation. And lastly, the skilled labor can be addressed by conducting trainings. All right, we're done with the uh, various site selection criteria. We will now cover the uh, aquaculture processes in the next uh, video. Thank you for listening.